Have you ever wondered if sand substrate is gonna ruin your canister filter? Have you ever wondered why your fish are flashing? And have you ever thought about sealing a crack in your aquarium and what you would use to do that? Well, I'm gonna answer all three of those questions and pick a comment of the week in this episode of Tank Talk. Hey folks, it's John with KG Tropicals. Welcome to episode two of the new Tank Talk series. If you want to see your questions answered in this format, put them down in the comment section below and you never know, I might select your question to answer on the next video or one three months from now. Who knows? But let's get right to it. So the first question today comes from Maz and he sent this back in March of 2018. Don't let this scare you. My last video was this way too. For the first few episodes, I had to have questions come from somewhere. I didn't have time yet for you to put your questions in the comments. So had to get them somewhere, went to kgqna at gmail and that's where I got these questions from. So I was very clear with people back in the day when I was doing kgqna, don't send in questions to that email address that you need an immediate answer to. And this first question today was somebody that completely ignored that. And here we are almost a year later, and I'm finally answering this question. Hi from the UK, a quick question about play sand substrate. Will it ruin my Fluval 206 external filter? Looking for a quick answer as installing it tomorrow. Thanks in advance. Well, I'm very sorry to have taken almost a year to get to your question, Maz. I hope things went well. But anyway, let's talk about it here. Uh, can a sand substrate, play sand or any sand substrate, damage the impellers on your canister filters? Really, any filters for that matter. The answer is absolutely yes. Think about what sandpaper is made from, folks. Sand can ruin almost anything. But there are some pretty simple ways to avoid this from happening. I've used sand substrates in the past with canister filters like my Fluvals and stuff like that. And what I've done is two things. I have raised the strainer up about four or five inches from the bottom. You wanna have that strainer down as far as possible, but if you put it all the way down there and then you have fish like African cichlids that are gonna be always kicking up the sand, they're just gonna be pushing it right into the intake and it's gonna go down and it's gonna ruin your impeller. You're gonna be replacing impellers probably once a month and it has nothing to do with the quality of the filter. It has everything to do with your fish and your substrate ruining it. So raise it up and that helps. It's still at risk because if any sand gets in there, it can still harm it. If you've got fish in there that like to blow it all over the place, that sounded weird, uh, then they can certainly still blow it up in there, even if it's five inches or so off the, the substrate. So what I did to help with that was I used intake filter sponges. Uh, this is kind of a pre-filter to block that sand from going down uh, into your filter. So it's very, very simple. Now, I would tell you, and I don't know that everybody would recommend this, but I still would, to be on the safe side, if you're gonna use an intake sponge, I love them, I mean, they work very, very well, I would still raise it up though. Uh, it's just my personal preference. I would still raise it up a little bit higher, just because you, you don't want the sponge to get clogged up by the sand. So, two things to remedy this, raise your intake up and use a, an intake sponge. And there you go. If you wanna know where to get intake sponges, just search them online, they're everywhere. You're in the UK, so I don't know where to tell you to get one. If you're in the US, Aquarium Co-op has them, a lot of places have them, but over in the UK, I don't know. I'm gonna stop reading the dates on these emails because the more I do that, the more embarrassing it's getting. But uh, this question comes from Alam Hussein. I hope I'm saying that right. Hi, John. I have viewed many of your videos online for a while now and subscribed to your channel. I really enjoy watching them and learning from you. I've been a hobbyist for about eight months or so and just turned my tank into an African Malawi cichlids tank from Community Fish. I have rocks and white sand in my tank. My tank is a Jewel Trigon 190 liter or 42 gallons. Is it Trigon, Trigon? I don't know, I don't know what that is. I've just noticed for the last few days that the fishes are flashing on the substrates. I've done the water test. My nitrate spiked up very high. I've done 25% water change yesterday and added sea chem purigen in my Fluval 405 filter. However, I still see some of my fishes flashing. 
Can you please share some of your expert advice as I am new hobbyist and worried about my cichlid's health? I really appreciate you taking the time to read my email and responding. Hope to hear from you soon. Alam, I am very sorry to let you down because it was not soon, but I'm going to do my best for you. First two questions today, both from London. Uh, so, okay, look, flashing can come from a couple of different things, particularly when we're talking about African cichlids. It could be that you are having a parasite issue. It could be that you are having nitrate issues, which you are. You didn't give me a reading on it, but you said that your nitrate is very high. Or it could be the fish simply trying to scurry up some food from the substrate. It's not as common that they're gonna do that, but to see them do that every once in a while, once in a blue moon, is nothing to panic over. But if you've got multiple fish doing that, and they're doing it constantly, then you have a serious problem going on in that tank. They're not just playing around trying to get food. So the first thing that needs to be said is I've done water a 25% water change yesterday and added some sea chem purigen. Uh, that's not gonna fix the problem here, Alam. We need to do a whole lot more than that. Purigen is a great product, but that's not gonna fix the problem that you're having. Uh, you are gonna fix the problem that you're having. There's, there's two things here. One is you need to be doing water changes, and two, you need to keep up with your water changes. Don't only do water changes when the problem happens. Do them routinely. This needs to be a maintenance plan that you do routinely. And they need to be more than 25% water changes. You're an African cichlid keeper now. These are busy, active, eating, and pooping fish. They're all over the place. They are go your nitrate levels are always gonna be raising in your African cichlid tanks. And doing a 25% water change on a whim is not gonna correct that problem. We need to be doing a lot of water changes. Am I one of those people that's gonna tell you 50% per day and all this? No, I don't do that in that tank. I do about 50% once a week in that tank. It's a routine, it's a Saturday morning thing. I get up, I do 50% and, and there you go. I've got eight fish in that tank, including a common pleco, which is getting ready to move out to a 125, probably in about six months. But anyway, um, that's all I've got in there. So there's not a huge load in that tank, but those fish are growing. I feed them every day, uh, sometimes twice a day. And so they're constantly growing, they're constantly eating, they're constantly pooping, which means they're constantly affecting the nitrate levels. And Purigen doesn't fix that problem, you do. You do it by water changes. In an African cichlid tank, we don't have the luxury of having a bunch of plants in there to help keep nitrates down because our Africans would just tear them up and eat them. So we have to take care of that. We're not gonna do it by way of chemicals. We're gonna do it by good old fashioned wet arms, wet hands, wet elbows, whatever it is you wanna call it. We gotta do the work. So I like that you're at least reacting to the problem. You're not just saying, well, let me throw this chemical in there and, and that'll fix it. At least you're willing to do the work or at least you were a year ago. I hope things have gone okay for you, but uh, way more than 25% water change, more frequent water changes. You need to get this under control because my guess is your fish are flashing because of those elevated nitrate levels. Maybe not a parasite, but if you wanna be on the safe side, which again, this is a long gone problem for you by now, but anybody watching this, when you're seeing that, when you see the elevated nitrate levels, you say, okay, well, that's the problem. I'm gonna fix the nitrate problems and then the problem will go away. I would go ahead and treat for parasites too. I'm not gonna go into a long tutorial on treating for parasites. I've done videos about that and I think everybody's done videos about that. So go ahead and use a, a parasite treatment, uh, even something simple like a general cure or something like that, just to be safe and uh, do some heavy, heavy water changes. Keep up on that maintenance, keep those nitrates down and hopefully the fish will stop flashing. But the, the last thing I wanna say about this is if you are an African cichlid keeper and you see your peacock or your hap or somebody go down to the substrate one time and flash, which basically means they just do like a quick dive and scurry up the gravel. If you see them do that one time, don't hit the panic button. If you see them do that once a month, don't hit the panic button. They're just playing around. They're trying to mess with the gravel so that some food pops up or something like that. Don't panic. It doesn't automatically mean you have a huge issue. But if you have several fish doing that and they're doing it repeatedly, you need to react. One of the most common complaints about my channel back in the day was that I ran my mouth too much. I've talked way too much and I'm definitely going to be accused of that 
in this series too. But for this week's comment of the week, I selected a comment that was from my how do you get your fish to grow really fast video, which I actually thought was a really good video. Go watch it. Let me know what you think. I thought it was a good video. Uh, but this guy, uh, RBD's Nuts, he didn't like it. And here's what he said. I just want to know about goldfish, not any other fish. You're an idiot. Stop talking. I had enough of your voice. Blah, 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 blah. How do I get my fish big? I send a demo now. And then he decided that another viewer of the video, uh, Patrick Dempsey, was a, was a big problem. And he said, go f*** yourself. And then Hector Quinez decided to tell RBD's nuts, f*** your goldfish. The internet is a beautiful place, isn't it? It's so wonderful. And this really, I mean, I, I used to get that kind of comment a lot. You know, you talk too much. The first six minutes of your video is just you rambling. Okay, you know what? It, it's true. I was definitely guilty of that in the past. I'm probably going to be guilty of that in these videos, but that's what these videos are for. Just kind of rambling and just talking. We're talking. We're friends here. We're fish keepers. Uh, obviously, um, RBD's nuts, who's probably... 12 years old is obviously not my friend because he's really mean to me but this is uh this is friends talking we're having a good time this was from three years ago i had to go a long way back to find one that was this entertaining but i don't get a whole lot of this stuff anymore because my videos are usually a little bit more boom 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 plus i was gone for a year and a half but uh this is always fun i enjoy this and you know i wish i could have done better for rbd's nuts but you know as some people you just can't satisfy Okay, the last question for today comes from Ricardo Holmes. I had a crack in my tank and I repaired it with non-toxic silicone. The problem is that when I put the fish back in the tank, they just end up dead. Can you please tell me what I'm doing wrong? Thanks, you. So one of the problems in, in any hobby or life in general, I guess, is that sometimes when things go wrong, we tend to ignore common sense because we don't want to take the blame. We don't want it to have anything to do with anything we've done. We, we don't do anything wrong ever, do we? No, we, we ignore common sense when catastrophe strikes because we have to figure out what the problem is. And of course, it, it, the problem can't be anything that I've done. In this particular situation, Rick Holmes, um, you're, you're kind of ignoring common sense. Uh, and the common sense is that obviously whatever it is that you used to fix the crack in your aquarium, there was it was not non-toxic. Uh, th that could be one. It could be that you used the wrong silicone. This is a, a fierce chemical that you're putting inside of the tank with all kinds of catalysts and crap in it that help to make it strong and make it seal the water. Um, it was either completely toxic, you used the wrong silicone, or there could be a, a separate thing, which would be, again, if you're, if you're knowledgeable in how to keep an aquarium, this is another common sense thing. And that is that you probably did a little more than just cleaning the silicone, uh, not cleaning the silicone, but repairing the crack with the silicone. You probably cleaned your tank while you were in there. Maybe you were using something to prepare the crack, uh, some type of acetone or mineral spirits or something because if you read the can it'll tell you not the can but the tube you know what i'm saying you might have prepped the crack with something uh which was toxic or it could be you didn't do that at all you just put the silicone in there which was toxic or you cleaned the whole tank and you ruined your cycle when you were making this repair because i'm assuming you took the water out you probably took everything out to repair this crack and you probably lost your cycle and so you set the tank back up again because, I mean, you didn't fill it immediately when you fixed the crack. So I'm sure you waited a day or something, probably completely dried out. You lost your cycle. When you set everything back up again, your, your tank spiked and you ended up killing uh, all of your fish. So those are the two scenarios that I can see that, uh, that, that could have caused this. One, use the wrong product. Or two, you, you lost your cycle because you went too far with uh, with drying out that tank before you made the repair. Those are the common sense approaches to this. And that's kind of how I want to go with these questions. I want to answer these questions 
from a common sense standpoint. I don't want to go overly complicated. So uh, now the question becomes, well, what silicone should I use then? It's 100% silicone. Uh, isn't it the GE Silicone 2? That's the one that I typically use. Haven't had to use it in a long time, but that's what I use. Um, it's 100% silicone. Uh, that's what you use inside of an aquarium. They do sell, uh, some pet stores will sell tubes of aquarium sealant. It's 100% silicone. That's all that is. Um, so if you read that, and a lot of them, uh, I'm drawing a blank on some of the names, but, but like the GE brand, it'll literally say on the tube, aquarium safe. It's kind of crazy. Uh, the last one I saw that had that, it had a little angel on it and it said aquarium safe. I said, what? That's crazy. It's like Home Depot has aquarium safe uh, silicone. I don't know if it's something that they have all the time, but I've seen it. In fact, I bought a tube of it just because of that. I was like, I don't need this, but I'm gonna get a tube of it just because it has a little fish on it and it's really cool. So 100% silicone is what you would do. Um, but you know what? Here's, here's what I'm gonna say. And then we're gonna end this. We're gonna wrap this up. Uh, if you have a crack in your aquarium, replace the aquarium rather than, because what are you doing? When, when you're sealing a crack, it's one thing if it's a seam, if it's in the corner or if it's a bottom or, or whatever, and you're redoing a seam, but if the glass cracked, putting silicone over it's not gonna fix that problem. I don't care who you are. So it, the lesson learned here is one, use the right silicone or do the right thing and just replace the tank because especially if it's like a 10 gallon or something, come on, I mean, that, that's nothing. You can replace the tank and you won't have these issues and you won't poison your fish or blow out your cycle. So there you go, episode two of Tank Talk in the books. I had a lot of fun with this one. I hope you did too. If you did, why don't you do me the favor of clicking that like button. If you like these videos and you wanna see more in the future, click the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, do all of that stuff so that you don't miss those. And you might not be aware, we have a series that we do every single Sunday called 10 Things. We have so much fun with this series. We take a topic and we give you the 10 things we think you need to know about that topic related to fish keeping. We have a lot of fun with it. You're not gonna to wanna to miss those. So subscribe so that you don't miss it. And don't forget, if you wanna see your questions answered in this series, Put them down in the comment section below. It's as simple as that. If you have a video or a photo that you want to include with your question, put the question in the comment and then send the videos over to kgqna at gmail.com. That's the easiest way that we can do it. And I'll put your video up on the screen while we're talking about it. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I've had so much fun with this. I think I'm going to record another one right now because this is just a good time. So be looking for that coming out next week. We'll see you then. Thank you again. And there you go. I'm done.